Hey, what's up? This is Rodney and I'm back. And I wanted to talk about Andy Cohen. He was on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> so basically, he came to the nigga show to try to clean up shit. But when your ass is on a motherfucking white show the other day, Jenny McCarthy show, but you said exactly what the fuck you meant, and you meant what you said. <sighs> I ain't up too much care for Andy. I done told y'all that. Um, I've been saying that for a few years now. Um, <laughs> I used to say Andy could, Andy could get this dick, but Andy couldn't even get this D no more. I'm so disgusted in her. I'm so disgusted in her. You know? I was really pissed off. Not pissed off, but it... I was a little bit... I know I was... I was really, really irritated with Charlemagne and... Angela Yee and DJ Envy. I just feel like I don't want to hear. Like, y'all, I understand he probably came on the show because he got to promote Love Connection. He also need to clean up the fuck shit that he done spilt on the motherfucking ground. You know what I'm saying? I understand he done to promote, you know, promote shit. But at the end of the day, I don't want to hear about him about, about to fuck some dude or some dude about to fuck him at the bar at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care about no shit like that. Andy full of shit and he full of cocaine. Look, I'm just telling y'all what that's what Kathy that's what Kathy said. And I believe it. You know the gays, they love some coke. Lord look. Gays, don't come over in my don't come over here talk, talking crazy to me. Y'all know y'all love some coke. Girl, you walk into the girl. Girl, you walk into the motherfucking restroom, bitch. All you gonna hear is <laughs> Bitch, that's all you gonna hear in the restroom. <laughs> girl, that's all you gonna hear. Bitch, you wait, bitch, I, all I'm trying to do is piss. Matter of fact, I don't care what the fuck y'all do. Can I just come in that stall? Because I just need to piss. Bitch, half of y'all don't probably see my dick anyway. <laughs> half of y'all don't probably don't see my dick anyways. So let me just come in this stall so I can take a piss. Girl, you, sit, you standing there waiting for them to come out, waiting for somebody to come out the motherfucking stall. Girl, you look up, bitch. Eight bitches done walked out the motherfucking style. Girl, y'all was in there. Bitch, y'all was in there doing some heavy sniffing, bitch. Anyways. Um, yeah, I was just aggravated with Charlemagne and Angela. and Because I just feel like they were not asking the right questions. Like, girl, what are y'all talking about? Like... Charlemagne, okay, whatever. And I'm trying to give Charlemagne a pass, even though I feel like at this point, when you have people on your show, you should know what the fuck is going on with them, or the fuck shit they done said, or even if they ain't said no fuck, sh no fuck shit, you should know what's going on with them. And I just, you know, I was trying to give Charlemagne a pass for the simple fact that, from what I understand, and from what I've heard him say, he doesn't really watch um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, or Orange County, or New York, or New Jersey, or any of them. But I know um, DJ Envy does. And I think Angela Yee does too. But then it was just kind of like, fuck all of them. Y'all sitting here asking these stupid ass questions. And then when I thought about it, duh, the reason why they probably not going to go in like they should go in. And not necessarily even go in, just ask questions that people want to know, that people want to hear. It's because DJ Envy got a motherfucking show that's coming out on Bravo. I said, all these motherfuckers ain't sleeping in the same bed together. Let me say something. Y'all can tell the fuck y'all want to say about Wendy Williams. And that bitch done said some shit that done got under my skin too. She really have. But one thing I love about Wendy Williams is Wendy Williams don't give a fuck about none of them motherfuckers. Wendy Williams will tell you straight up in the motherfucking heartbeat. Bitch, I come here, I do my job, and I go back home to Jersey. I don't fuck with none of them girls. I don't hang out with none of them girls. We not friends. I'm here to do my motherfucking job for these people, like she said the other day. I'm here to do my job for the, for the co-host. Them other girls, these celebrities, I don't give a fuck about them. And that's why I feel like now, it's kind of like, girl, I can't even get decent questions from Charlemagne. Anyways, um, and another thing too, Andy, when I thought about it, Cause we were all hyped up like he called Kim out, but he really didn't call Kim out when they were in the restroom at the end of the um, 
reunion when they were in the restroom and um Kim he told Kim that she was combative the entire season and you know blah 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 but the only reason why I what I came to is the only reason why he said that was because Kim was at that point attacking him and attacking the crew the cameraman she was at that point she was attacking the show you see what I'm saying because I don't know if he said it but when she was saying shit like what no what what other white woman would sit on the stage with five African American um women I don't remember. Tell me if I'm wrong. I don't remember his motherfucking ass. His motherfucking ass coming to the uh, the defense of any of them black women sitting on that goddamn couch. But when she started talking about the fact how they didn't show something that would paint her in a positive light, that's when his ass opened up his mouth. Because at that point, again, Kim was attacking him and Bravo and whomever else. Fuck Andy. Andy know what the fuck he doing. And then Andy gave Kim you know, the green light to keep on going. Because after he got on Jenny McCarthy's show and basically took up for her motherfucking ass, you know what Kim did? You know what that bitch did? She got her ass on motherfucking Twitter or whatever she was on talking about Nene tried to kick me. Girl, ain't no bitch tried to kick you, girl. See, this is the thing. This is this is y'all. This is what some of y'all need to realize. I know, I understand some of y'all love Kim. Bitch, at one point we all loved Kim. But I also said, when I heard Kim was coming back, mm -mm, that don't need to bring Kim back. From when Kim, when Real Housewives of Atlanta first started up until now, my opinion, of course, hopefully a lot of people have changed because, bitch, that's basically 10 years. You see what I'm saying? My opinion from then to now has changed on a lot of stuff, but we're just talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, yeah, when Kim, when it first started out, it was like, okay, Kim... This white girl, oh my gosh, she's so cool, blah, blah, blah. And now it's kind of like, okay, y'all bringing a white girl back. Y'all bringing Kim back. Why? Why y'all bringing it? That irritates me so motherfucking much. If you want something to get under my motherfucking skin, tell me it's a show that's coming on and it's five black girls and one white girl or, you know, five white girls and one black girl. Did I say that right? Yeah. It tell me it's just, if it's five black girls and one white girl or five white girls and one black girl. That shit will get under my skin. I remember this gay show. What's it? Fire Island? Some show with some gays that was on Logo. I was talking to my friend and I was like, you watching that? He was like, hell no, I ain't watching that bullshit. Exactly. Why? Because it's five white motherfuckers and one black motherfucker. And usually the black person who they got on the show is usually whitewashed anyways. And that's just true motherfucking tea. Bitch, put me on a motherfucking show. Bitch, you put me on a show, bitch, it'll be a whole motherfucking new cast. Bitch, you gonna look up, it'll be seven motherfuckers on the set that's all black. Where these seven niggas come from? They my friends. Girl, I don't know these white people. Shit, we ain't got nothing in common. Let me stop. This is alcohol. This is alcohol. I love white people to pieces I do. I just hate when y'all try to act silly. And act like I don't know what the fuck is going on. Anyways. One thing I hate is when white people... Let me just say something. When white people, or black people, but especially white people, well, really white people. When white people try to defend the fact that they're racist, or they, may, or they probably said some fucked up shit. Not necessarily even racist. When they try to defend the fact that they probably said some fucked up shit, they try to say, I have a black friend. And then every time you look up, it's a, it, you know, that one gay boy, his, his best black friend, he ain't like black. He ain't black, nigga. You know what I'm saying? He black. He got, you know, this much hair on his head. It's permed. He shop at Hot Topic. <laughs> Oh, girl, he shop at Hollister or Abercrombie and Finch still to this day. He 33 years old. <sighs> no, bitch, I'm black. Girl, huh? Girl, she white. Her skin the same color as mine, but girl, she white. You ain't got no black friends, girl. I'm ready to tell you, girl. I'm black, she white. <laughs> Oh, 
Um, let me just say something. People need to stop with the whole Kim is not racist, Kim don't look racist. Let me just say something. Racist, y'all need to stop acting like racists wear hoodies and robes now. Bitch, racists do not wear hoodies and robes. Bitch, they wear khakis. They wear Jimmy Choo's. Okay? Bitch, they wear Versace. They wear Valentino. They wear Express. They wear uh, Ross Dress for Less. They wear TJ Maxx. They wear Givenchy. They wear all that shit, bitch. So it's just uh, don't don't think that just because a motherfucker not walking around here covering his face up with a motherfucking white cape and got a white sheet on, oh well he's not racist because he's not dressed like a racist. Girl, please, your mailman could be racist. The bitch who you work with at your job could be racist. The motherfucker who handing your food at the McDonald's drive-through could be racist. Bitch, somebody that live in your apartment complex could be racist. You speak to the motherfuckers every day. The motherfucker who check you out at the goddamn H-E-B -H or the local grocery store, Publix, Kroger, Roundels, could be a motherfucking racist. You see all the motherfuckers we got in the White House? They wear suits every day. I'm over Andy. I've been over Andy. I've been over Andy, but I was trying to give Andy like, okay, you know how like you just tolerate somebody because it's kind of like, okay, whatever. And you know what? Another thing too that pisses me off about Andy, because Andy basically said at the end of the um at the end of the interview, like just give me don't kill today. You can cancel me out. I don't care. Andy don't give a fuck. Andy don't give a fuck. Andy, you try to defend and let uh, you know what? This is what I should have mentioned in, at the beginning. Kim. <laughs> Kim, and I said this already, but I'm going to say it again. Kim said, what other white woman would get on a show, uh, get on a, uh, you know, couch with five other African-American women? Bitch, if that ain't racist, I don't know what the fuck it is. And then y'all, not y'all, Andy, you try to defend Kim and say shit like, oh, she twisted her words up. She didn't know what to say. Girl, look, let me just say something. Sometimes we say shit that we might not necessarily mean. Sometimes we do get caught in the moment. And sometimes when you angry, you may say some shit that you may not necessarily mean. Kind of like when I was so hyped over Beyonce's performance at Coachella and I said some shit about her and Michael Jackson. I thought about that shit. And I came, not y'all, I came to the conclusion like, bitch, you sounded stupid. That shit is not even true. And I corrected myself. I just feel as though when it's something serious as... When you try to paint these black women as being these evil like you know what let me give you an example so i used to work at this job right and one of my co-workers received uh, a promotion it was a black girl and you know she had the typical black sh not typical i don't want to say typical but she was she had a big ass big thighs um, I shouldn't have said typical, not typical, because all black women are not shaped the same. Um, but she had big thighs, big ass, she had a flat stomach, big titties. Um, but the job that she had before, it didn't call for her to dress up. So she would just wear tennis shoes, a t-shirt, and like, you know, some jeans to work every day. And then when she got the promotion, she had to start dressing up. And so, of course, some of her clothes you know, would fit her body. And because she was already shapely, you know, it shows off a lot. And of course, not of course, some people started complaining. Now, it was only one time that I remember I was like, girl, you know damn well that skirt is too motherfucking short. But other than that, for the most part, 
that was her body. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, she has a skirt on, and the skirt might be one of those tight skirts. Like, what is it, like, a spandex type of skirt? So it's kind of like, yeah, it's going to look different on her body than Susan's body, because Susan ain't got no fucking body. Susan's shaped like square bob. This bitch got a shape. You see what I'm saying? And I remember this one girl used to come to work. And this bitch used to wear crop tops to work. Now, okay, it wasn't all the way live crop tops, but it used to, it used to show about this much of her stomach. Bitch, that's a lot to be at work. You, most jobs, you shouldn't show none of your stomach. So even if it's this much, it's too much sometimes. And nobody ever said nothing to that girl. And so I remember one day, my friend had some clothes on and she was like, girl, why somebody complained about my skirt? They said it was too tight. I said, girl. I said, this mother I said, this is exactly why I don't fuck with none of these motherfuckers up here. The most they get out of me is a hey, how you doing? That's it. Don't try to talk, don't try to hold conversation with me in the lunchroom. Don't try to talk to me while we waiting in line at the motherfucking coffee shop. None of that. I know how some of y'all motherfuckers are. I see y'all for y'all motherfucking works. The same bitches that com that's complaining on you, they ain't said shit about this bitch who walking around here with a motherfucking crop top on. This bitch shaped like, shaped like uh, square bob, sponge bob. Ain't nobody said shit. But because you got a body, they want to report your ass. And she was like, I know. She was like, I'm, I'm not even too much worried about it. Bitch, I am. It ain't even my motherfucking body, but I'm worried about it. Because this, this is exactly the shit I be talking about. And then when I walk around here, they be like, oh, Rodney, Rodney don't speak sometimes. You damn so right. You right. Sometimes I don't. And when I do, and when I do, and when I do speak, it's a hey, how you doing? And I keep it pushing, bitch. I don't fuck with y'all. I give y'all just enough. And the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, like I told my cut. Now I'm getting off subject a little bit. The truth of the matter is, like I told one of my coworkers some one time, because this one person did say that I don't speak to them, bitch. I don't have to speak to you, huh? If you go around here, I, I can guarantee motherfucking to you. I can guarantee you, I'll put my last motherfucking paycheck on it. Bitch, you go around here, you ask at least 99.9% .9 of the people in this motherfucking building, they gonna tell you Rodney is nice, he always speaks, he always smiles. Now, bitch, I'm not gonna sit there and say I'm gonna hold some full-blown conversation with you. Because for the most part, most of the time, if I really don't fuck with you, fuck with you, bitch, you are gonna get a, hey, how you doing? Boom. But girl, I don't speak to her because I don't too much fuck with her. So she wasn't lying. <laughs> girl, fuck these hoes. Anyways, girl, I got all the way off subject. Yeah, I, the, the point of me telling that story was, it's just like, when it just comes to stuff, black women are just not on the, like, they are not treated the same. A black girl can have on one outfit and then another girl can have on another outfit and then this other girl is treated completely completely I mean treated completely differently than the black girl. I remember another time one of my friends this it was a problem at work. My friend literally my coworker my coworker literally repeated the same thing back to that bitch that she said to her. Because the girl called her trying to check her. But come to find out, the bitch was wrong. So my friend repeated the same shit back to her. And guess who they said had a motherfucking attitude? Guess who they looked at crazy? My friend. I said, how the fuck they look at you crazy when all you did was repeat the same thing that bitch told you? That's why I don't be fucking with some of these people. That's exactly why all they get is a, hey, how you doing? Anyways, girl, let me go because I'm about to get pissed off. <laughs>